and welcome to uh, the MV Parts Store Basement Workshop. Uh, down here today, got a little bit of excitement. You can see what's there in the background. Recently, I was able to get my hands on not one, not two, but three multi fuel injection pumps. Um, quite impressed with that, actually. Uh, one of them, the one that's there in the background, is actually a rebuilt pump so that's our uh, that is our uh, base unit right there to show what they should be like when they're all done uh, but we've got two of them to play around with the very first one that I brought down here to play around with of those two lo and behold the hydraulic head was seized um, no matter what I do I'm not gonna turn this gear the way that it should, it only goes so far and then it's locked. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put together a video series of the different parts and components of the entire injection pump, things such as the hydraulic head, what is it, how do you go ahead and rebuild it, how do you replace the O-rings when they go bad, how do you know your O-rings are bad, to your FDC, how it's bypassed, what is its real function? Uh, then we're going to flip it upside down and review the gear pump and what it all does and its purpose with your injection system. So be looking for it. I think the first video that we're going to do is since I've got this head off is we're going to go ahead and tear this thing apart and rebuild it just like I did. Uh, if you recall, if any of you have read the uh, write up that I did on Steel Soldiers oh wow it's got to be about seven years or so ago I guess uh, how this thing is taken apart and rebuilt uh, we're gonna go ahead and actually do it on this head to take it from non-functional to functional so be looking for more of that to come we have it in the shop today we've got our hands on a hydraulic head that's no good uh, it's completely locked up and as you can see somebody went ahead and they removed this plug they removed a couple of the machining plugs out of here uh, but the main thing is we've got a head that no longer turns you can see here I'm trying to move the gear and it won't turn um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and visit the idea of how can you go ahead with the most basic of tools rebuild this in your shop, in your garage, um, and it's so easy. When I knew absolutely nothing whatsoever about the multi-fuel injection system years back, I did this. I did a write-up on Steel Soldiers about it. Um, never had I torn into anything like this before, and I did it without a video, without pictures. The only thing I had was the local diesel shops telling me it couldn't be done so here it is right now just the basic head I'm gonna go ahead and um, start pulling this apart and then we'll get some pictures and video while we're doing it all right stay tuned here we are in the shop hoping that this video is gonna work out pretty well um, this is where I do a lot of prototype work this is where I do a lot of uh, tearing stuff down, kind of play around with it, see how it works, and all that sort of stuff. So that's the quick rundown of my basement shop, if you will. Okay, so let's imagine that this hydraulic head is in your truck, in your uh, deuce and a half, five ton multi-fuel truck, and your truck will not start you check you've got no fuel going to the injectors so now what do you do the first thing that you're going to want to do is this plug right here it's a three-quarter inch um, bolt head that you'll need that's your center plug in the hydraulic head you're going to go ahead and pull that plug out and it's probably a wise idea to unplug the in-tank fuel pump uh, at the fuel tank because as soon as you turn your key on otherwise fuel will start to bubble up out of this bolt well more like spray or a geyser and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a wooden dowel or a brass trip 
not a uh, Craig jig tool like I've got here. But this head's no good, so we're not too terribly worried about it. But you're going to take your wooden dowel, your brass drift, and you're going to drop it down in the center hole. And what you're going to do is you're going to have somebody turn the truck over, or you're going to turn it over, and somebody else is going to watch. And what should happen, what you're watching for, is will this go up and down? And even with the spring tension, I still can move it a little bit, the spring a little bit, but this is not moving up and down. What the deal is, is there's a plunger in here. The gear turns, and there's a cam inside your injection pump that will go up and down, and that forces the plunger up and down against this plug here, and that creates roughly 3,000 pounds, uh, 3,000 PSI of pressure to come out of each one of these six ports to go to your injectors, to open the injectors. Your injectors have very tight springs in them and will not open unless they get to that 3000 PSI, which is created here. So if you can imagine that plunger is like a little, um, a little cylinder inside of any motor, and it's on its compression stroke when it comes up. And the reason for it to turn with the gear is there's a pinhole that runs down that plunger and that pinhole lines up with one of your six injector ports here. That's why you've got all of these little Allen wrench um, plugs in here. Those are for machine purposes. That way they can drill down one direction, drill in the other direction, and that's how they get their, their travel for the fuel path to come from this plunger to your injectors. Just because your injector lines overall are around about a quarter inch in diameter, sorry I, don't, I haven't mic'd one up lately, the actual hole that the fuel travels through is, you could plug it with a pin. It's very thin, but those injector lines have very thick walls to handle all of this pressure. So that's the first test you're going to do. And if, when the motor's being turned over, this is not going up and down, you now know that for sure your hydraulic head is your problem. Some people have had limited success with spraying something like a PB blaster down in here, and if the plunger is stuck in the up position, they'll use the brass drift and tap it down. And it frees it up, and they're able to get going again, no problems. Uh, that was not the case for when mine seized up on me years ago, uh, and definitely not the case with this head. So that's your first test of what you're going to do to tell if it's your hydraulic head or not. Next, we're going to go ahead and, because we know that this head is no good, uh, not to mention most of these plugs have been removed, as well as the uh, larger one here, we're going to go ahead and carry on now we have to remove this whole bottom portion here. Oh, one of the O-rings are still on there. That's one of the O-rings that comes in your, uh, your kit to replace all the O-rings. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove this cover, the spring, the keepers, and disassemble the whole head. And uh, then we'll get some video on that as well. All right? So about the hardest thing that you're going to have to deal with is getting this cover off and it's really not that hard uh, there's a couple of little dimples around it kind of like one right here just take a screwdriver uh, I'm using two different size screwdrivers both flathead um, probably wouldn't be a half bad idea to use something like an actual can opener even because all that these are is they dimpled it in a little bit so that they could keep this cover locked in there so like I say, just a couple of little pries in the right place with a screwdriver, even a can opener, and this will pop right up. And what you're going to have to end up doing, um, you can see, here we go, there's a total of three of these dimples. Um, when you're all done and you're putting the head back together, you're just going to want to take, slide this back on and re-crimp those down and all will be right and well with the world. 
some of the main things though that you're going to want to do and there's marks actually down here on the head for it already um, but you're going to want to make sure that you're putting this back on the same way in which you took it off uh, when you do put it back on otherwise these openings here oh, I gotta take it back off for you um, these openings here and here that's what lines up with the gear inside of the injection pump itself uh, to turn this gear here that is not going to turn now when all is said and done this gear needs to tr spin freely now, I'm going to take this out of the vise for a second we're going to go through some more of the anatomy here okay all right so this here is the bottom of the plunger that is where what everybody refers to as the button would ride now you've got three detents around here and that is where the clip fits that would hold the button in place a lot of times what will happen is that clip will fail the button falls off your truck may or may not run uh, because this is not being pressed as far as it should uh, with the button in place so just kind of keep that in mind um, now when you're taking this apart this spring I'm sorry here this is horrible camera work on my part this spring will actually compress and inside of here are two valve keepers so if you've ever done any work on a uh, on a engine at all and you've done valve work you know what a valve keeper is I don't have an actual valve compression tool uh, so I'm going to be compressing this with just the standard clamp if you happen to have access to a, a valve compression tool that's what you'd want to press this down to get those two keepers out of there and then all of this here will come out we can push the plunger out through the other way uh, but right in here here and up here on top you can see the indents with what we call the butterfly clip unfortunately a lot of times when this gear stops moving it stops moving because the plunger is locked up and what will happen is it will actually break this butterfly clip I don't know if this one's cracked or not yet I won't know until I get the uh, spring out of the way because of course it's always underneath there so I'm gonna keep working at this now let's kinda of take a top view here um, so what I actually did is I just compressed the end of the spring into my vise uh, pressed it down in the two little clips which are right here they simply fell right out onto the floor I strongly recommend if you're gonna do anything foolish like that though have a box under it alright let's loosen the vise up a little bit and we'll pull the spring out of course like I said have a box under it alright so this here is the top portion and you'll see or well, I guess technically the bottom portion of the hydraulic head and you can see the mark where the three clips go in or the three tabs of the clip that holds the button in place will go in you've got that next is your spring and this spring here if you had your a tab and the spring would go on and it would ride just like that now inside of here inside of this little clip that's where your spring keepers will latch in <clears throat> now as you go further up you'll have this little piece this clip that's going to ride right here or on the other side of the spring it's very important that you maintain order when you're removing all of this now here's what everybody has always referred to as the butterfly clip probably should have secured this whole thing in the vise first but no it was a little tight 
I got it off, but the clip is intact. Now one thing I want to point out with this clip, not sure how well it's going to show up on video, but at the bottom here, it's rounded. So I'm going to rotate this over just for effect. Now if you were to look at this really close, it looks like a loaf of bread. It's flat on the bottom, flat on the two sides, and rounded on top. That is because, you're going to go ahead and take your gear out of the way. Gear can only go on the one way. Remember your clip is going to be on there. Now this is the bottom end of your plunger. And you will see, hopefully if things focus, probably not, right here is a flat ground into the plunger and another flat and another, another flat with this one part right here being the only rounded part. And that is how your butterfly clip goes on there. All right, that's your round, that's your flat. We're gonna try and turn this for effect, but of course it's not gonna focus in very well. Sorry about that. All right, so anyway, now the only thing that you have left to do is to get your plunger knocked out. I highly recommend a lot of soaking. Do not just hit this thing with a hammer if you want to try and reuse it. Remember, hitting this now with a hammer is going to cause damage somewhere within this shaft that you don't want. Also, right here is your fuel shutoff block. Uh, that, honestly, is all that shuts your fuel off. If you've gotten this far, right in here, when you are... Um, replacing the o-rings and you've dealt with that little shaft it's got that goofy tab on it that's the groove that that tab locks into and that block will move up and down to either open up your fuel or shut your fuel off to the truck that's it that's that we'll get a much closer look at it once i'm able to soak everything here and get our plunger out and through the magic of television i've been able to soak this numerous times and drive it back and forth. Um, if you have a press, that's all the better. If you don't, well, then you got to go this old-fashioned way. Again, use a soft material such as a brass drift, and just work it, work that plunger back and forth. You don't have to uh, get it out in one fell swoop. Just little bits at a time. I have been working this plunger back and forth probably about 10 times now and I feel that it's right at the edge to come out and after I soaked it I'm still spraying the entire cylinder down uh, right now I'm just using a WD-40 penetrating oil and the plunger will only come out uh, through the top of the head it will not come out through the bottom it doesn't fit that way so and when you're, if you're going to do this, or even if you're going to um, use a, a press, you're going to want to put some wood on that actual plunger. Oh yeah, she's moving real nicely now. Um, just so you don't damage things. So, just a little, a little bit more. Real nice now. I'm anxious to see what this plunger looks like after uh, it was seized in that good, and can only imagine for how long it was seized in there. So there we go. Out it comes. Here's the plunger. We're going to go ahead and get some better videos of this. Um, this plunger here, I don't know how well it's going to show up on my fingers. Um, there you go. It's actually full of metal chunks. Um, and in fact, the holes that are used for the injection are plugged. You can kind of see where these holes are. And you see that 
Yeah, that one you can kind of see through, but others uh, up here more you cannot see through. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and clean this all up really good now, and uh, I'll show you how to put it all back together. Here we are. I've got the head kind of at an angle for filming purposes. We've got our parts laid out here on a block. Uh, one thing I want to point out is this here, now as I said before, this is your fuel shutoff block. Uh, inside the cover uh, where your fuel, where your shutoff cable goes to in your multi-fuel truck, there's an arm that rides through a shaft and has a small clip on it at the end. And that clip rests inside of this groove here. So this block will slide up and down and its only purpose is to either allow, allow fuel to flow through the hydraulic head or to shut the fuel off, therefore shutting the truck off. Right here is your plunger. This is what goes inside the bore here. This moves up and down just like any cylinder inside of any engine would do, but it creates the pressure that's needed to open your injectors, roughly 3,000 PSI. Down the center, it's bored out, and that lines up with these four holes here, and that is what sends fuel to your injectors based upon timing and where it's all at. Okay, that's why it's very important that these grooves, you know, or um, flats here, and the round line up with your gear and your butterfly valve where you can kind of see that bread shape that I was talking about now. Sorry for the really crummy focus there. Um, that's what gives you your timing inside of the head. Now that fuel shutoff block, that will line up with, as soon as it comes into focus, this pinhole right here. That's what supplies fuel. That's what it's shutting off. This right here is the difference between your truck running or your truck not running when it comes to this shutoff block. Okay, the question on everybody's mind. How do we go and get this plunger that was stuck? You can see there's some definite rust marks on here. Uh, some definite pitting and whatnot. Uh, how do we get this plunger back into this head and make sure that things run? Um, as you can see, it really does not want to slide back in. It will fit. There we go. But it only goes so far. And now I've got to go through the hassle of pulling it out. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to go down to the auto parts store and you're going to get some lapping compound or go on to Amazon and order it up or get some very, very, very fine jeweler's rouge. All right, you know how sandpaper, the higher the number it is, it means the finer it is, the better finish you're going to get, the smoother finish you're going to get. You want this here to be the highest grit that you can get so that you're not tearing things up. You don't want to sand this down. You're more or less just trying to polish it. Now I have not tried to polish one of these on a buffing wheel. That might work. I've never done it, so I cannot tell you yes or no that that'll work. All I can tell you is the way that I did it, and I had success, and that truck is still running today. So you take your bit of lapping compound, that's what we did, or Jewelers Rouge, and you grab a cordless drill, and what we did is we went and we put it in from the other side of the head. So we went from the top side of the head. I'm going to close this the jaws just a little bit because we're only doing demonstration. We're not actually doing anything right now. So we took, we put the lapping compound on here, a very thin coat of it, put this into the chuck of the drill, put it in from the top, and ran it up and down, up and down. You see that this thing doesn't even want to fit in this hole right now. It is too snug to even fit 
in there. If you run this up and down slowly, up and down, and then speed it up so you're going as far up and down in there as you can that that drill will allow, this portion right here, the head and through here, is all that you need to do to make sure that you've got enough flow to now get this head to work again. It doesn't take a whole lot, it just takes a little bit and what, it, what should happen is when you put this in it should be a snug fit but not hard. You can see my fingernail there is turning red because I'm pushing so hard right now and that's not going anywhere. This should slide in and out with some resistance but not hard. And then when you put everything back together in reverse order, you should be able to turn this gear. It should just spin freely, not keep spinning, but spin like it's uh, bearing in grease. Make sure, though, that everything is cleaned up. You're going to have that fine grit in here. You've got to make sure all of that is cleaned out before you reassemble everything and put it back in your truck. But if you go through the reverse steps, I'm very confident that you'll get it back together and everything will be fine. If you need the buttons or the um, the three clip, uh, three prong clip that goes on the bottom to hold the button on, let me know. I should have some still available. Um, everything I get is direct from Ambeck. These clips, I don't know if anybody's still able to get these or not. Uh, we are actually looking to make these now, uh, so I'm glad that I have one that's intact. Uh, so I can go ahead and mic this piece up and we'll take these on over to the machine shop and see if we can have those made and hardened and what that's going to cost us to have a bunch of those done uh, just to keep these trucks on the road and running. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me and let me know. If you need any parts, uh, go ahead and find